the mental health minute is now <laughs> run by Gonky. No, it's actually all of us. Um, I'll just, I guess I'll just lead it. And that's because this is not, you know, it's not my, my idea. So, um, Shannon sent this to me last week and she's a, she's a viewer and she, it was her idea, the mental health minute. And she called it perceived loss of value or purpose when leaving the military. And I just, <clears throat> you know, I was like, well, what do you call that? Well, Hey, it's just, you know, value and purpose. And then her example was, you know, she was, I think she made it up to an E4, right? She's in the military and she got out and she went to college and she just couldn't, she had a hard time fitting in, right? Because when you're in the military, it's, uh, it's regimented, so to speak. Uh, and there's, you know, there's mission involved. There's always mission on your mind, right? Like all military, yeah. uh, vets, all vets, uh, a lot of my friends that have gotten out, like I always see the struggle, like we're all mission driven, mission driven, but actually when you get out, you know, you should probably be family driven, but anyways, um, so I took a look at that and I was, you know, I was thinking about it as far as like, you know, mental health. And I, so I come from a small town in Ohio and it's kind of, you know, Ohio's kind of the rust belt and, you know, there's some factories there and it's a sad story. You know, we always talk about it. People will work in the factory for 40 years. They'll retire two years later. They're dead. All right. So what happens, you know, and if you, you know, if you dive into it a little bit and I'm not a psychologist, but you know, my dad's retired. He's 80, 82 years old. And he told me years ago, he's like, man, he's like, I give anything to go back to work. And I'm like, why? And he's like, it's just a reason to get up in the morning, <clears throat> you know? And I literally think a lot of people, um, uh, when they retire or, uh, in Shannon's case, you know, you, you leave the military and you go somewhere else and you, you don't fit in, you don't know how to fit in. You lose your sense of value and purpose. Cause it's like, well, you know, kind of what's, what's the point. Right. And that can, that can, that can lead you down to, that can lead you down a path. You don't want to go. I, I remember, you know, the commitment as a pilot in the Navy is 10 years. And I remember, you know, sitting around the ready room and there comes a point when we're all kind of talking about, Hey, what are you going to do? You're going to stay in or get out. And it's, it's always, you can tell it's like, and I experienced this too. It's the fear of getting out. What, you know, what will I, you know, what will I do? How will I fit in? You know, what, what is my purpose right on the outside? Now I'm a pilot, right? I go fly off the airlines. Well, I didn't want to fly off the airlines. Right. So when I get out, I got out, I didn't have an airline job or anything. I just got out. And, um, the, you know, sitting around, like, I remember one of the guys saying, you know, like, well, what do you do when you accomplish your childhood dream at 25, <laughs> you know? And, it, you know, I, you think about that for a second and, you know, move where I'd argue guys like you and I are extremely lucky, right? I mean, my childhood dream was to be a fighter pilot and I achieved that at 25. And then, you know, at 30 ish, it was like, do you want to stay in or get out? And, you know, I went through the mental gymnastics of like, you know, what should I do? Right. And then when I did get out, <clears throat> luckily for me, I shifted, you know, my purpose in life towards, uh, towards family. And, uh, you know, I was able to kind of get a handle on that. Uh, you know, that it's always a mental game on that mental game in your, in your head. But, you know, a lot of people, I don't know, like I said, I see it a lot back home, mainly with a lot of like my friends, parents and stuff that's, you know, that, that did a lot of time working, they retire a couple years later, they're gone. And it's, it's almost like a, it's almost like, man, when, when they quit having a reason to get up, you just see the mental and the physical decline. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's good to be aware of that, you know, like in her case, Hey, how do you fit in? Well, you might not fit in, but I mean, there's going to be other motivated people in college. Like not everybody's there, uh, you know, to party, have a good time and be, be undisciplined. I mean, there's, there's groups and things and, and you can get involved with things outside of, you know, in her case, like college, um, I like, you know, I, you know, getting involved with it, with a good church is always good. Um, but I don't know, mover. What do you think, man? Value and purpose, uh, you know, with how it relates to, to, to mental health. And I mean, I, I think we can both agree that, um, you, you have to have a, I mean, you have, you have to be here for a reason, right? There has to be a purpose. Yeah. So I went through this 
probably twice, maybe three times. Um, cause I'm like you, you know, I, when I was, I, you accomplish your dreams early and then what, but my dreams when I grew up was everything, you know, and I, I wanted to be, you know, fighter pilot was never number one on the list until very much later in life. You know, I wanted to be, you know, like a, a soldier, a ghostbuster, a firefighter, a cop, <laughs> you know, uh, like everything. If, if I wanted to do a lot and, you know, you get sucked into, so to speak, being your identity, being your job, you know, your, your purpose is your identity. And you see that often, you know, the people that peak in high school, they wear their letterman jackets. And I've, I've made that analogy with fighter pilots and with military pilots in general, because I remember when I was a young Lieutenant in the squadron, I used to look at some of the dudes that would just never go home because they just like, they would finish working and their families were at home and they would just hang out in the bar and shoot their watches. Like some of that was cool. You'd learn a lot of stuff, but at some point you're like, dude, go home. This is right. not who you are. Right. And you just saw that, that if they didn't like, they had nothing else. Like that was their entire purpose and existence. And while, you know, it's funny cause I didn't start thinking about this until recently, but while I was in, I was trying to find a ways out. Like I went and, you know, interviewed with the FBI. I went, you know, other jobs. Cause I'm like, dude, there's so much more I want to do, but you don't get sucked in until it, you lost it or you're, you're looking at losing it. And for me, it didn't really hit me until I left VFA 204 because I didn't leave on my own terms, you know, the medical thing and, you know, non-deployable. They said, you can't be here anymore. And I went to kind of a non-flying deal because I didn't know if I was going to go to the Air Force Reserve or not. And I, the, the, luckily, the timing worked out that I went to the airline. And the first part, like airline training, 100%, I was on board. I was, you know, I was even telling T-Bear, I'm like, see, I don't want to go fly military anymore. This is my purpose now. You know, I'm an airline pilot. And of course, T-Bear, you know, pees in my Cheerios and says, well, you know, even a T-38 is better than flying an airliner. <laughs> and it wasn't until I actually started doing it and I start talking to some of these captains, you know, and I'm like, you know, I was 33 years old or whatever. I was, you know, a young first officer and you know they're talking about yeah back in my day you know i flew the viper flew the f-15 whatever and i'm like damn it i miss it you know i don't want to i'm a single seat guy you know <laughs> and dude that put me in a funk yeah. because then even though my whole life it was never all everything it started being my identity because i felt like i wasn't a whole person anymore I, I wasn't who i used to be and i wasn't good enough and i didn't think i would ever do it again and yeah. so I struggled with it. You know, I struggled with that confidence. I struggled with, you know, who am I? What's my purpose? And at the time, I didn't really have a whole lot outside of it. You know, I was, I'd written some books, but they hadn't done very well. Uh, or they'd done okay. You know, I wasn't like the author, right? right? And I was doing the sheriff thing, but I wasn't doing it that much. I was, you know, I'd do a parade here and there. I just, you know, it was a fun thing to do, but I wasn't doing much with it. And so when that lifeline came out and I went to the 301st and flew the T-38, it was like, at I remember driving to base, I was talking to Bucky, a uh, friend of ours from, from 204, and I said, dude, he's like, I don't know why you're doing this. It's stupid. You're going to get hurt. You know, you're going to be mad. You're going to waste all this time. You're going to lose all this money. Just stay with the airline. Keep doing it or whatever. And I'm like, no, man, I have to because that's my purpose. I'm a fighter pilot. That's my identity. And he's like, dude, there's so much more to life than that. And I went there and at first it was awesome. And then, you know, the stuff, you remember the stuff that you didn't like. Oh, yeah. And then obviously, you know, the, the bureaucracy got me, you know, it got us, it got our positions, oh, you know, yeah. it, it ended before we wanted to. And I took the COVID leaves and I, I got away from the airline thing and was just doing that. And so of course it happens again, right? 2022 happens. Not only do we lose the funding, you know, you're never going to fly again, but then they, they came after me and, you know, personally came after me. And so like that attacks your identity too, because it's like, I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I don't know who I am. I don't know what my purpose is. And I don't know where I belong because they have just ostracized me. They've just kicked me out of their club and said, I'm not one of them. And so it was tough. It was exactly, you know, that what you talk about where you, you go, well, what do I do with my life? You know, cause I, I hated the airline. I don't want to go back to that. Right. And I, I don't know what, what to do. And 
I've always felt what has helped me is turning a negative into a positive. And um, two things that came out of that. The first one, uh, I had put off doing the field training program for the sheriff's office. And I started doing that just to get out of the house. I had a buddy of mine that said, hey, dude, you need to do this. You know, I'll help you. We'll get you. We'll get you, you know, back current and, and do it again. That was like the groundbreaking thing for me because it gave me perspective. It gave me purpose and yep. it gave me the opportunity to, to, to help somebody else in the worst time, you know, professionally for me. Then, you know, the, the battle continued with the military and, you know, it just wasn't winning. Then we started this channel, you know, not this channel, but this show. And that kind of helped, especially oh, when, yeah. uh, you know, you lose both dogs and now you're like, dude, yeah. I'm a dog guy. What am, what am I doing here? And then we turned that into something good because Luna and I did the therapy canine program. So, and I'm not saying all this to brag about it. What I'm saying is in times of identity lost in times of when you're feeling like you have no purpose, you have to look within and go, how do I make the situation better? How do I turn a negative into a positive? How do I let go of what I had and thought I needed and get something that's going to help somebody else? Because that is what helped me was the idea that I can take this adorable little dog and make her make somebody else smile, or I can right. go out and, you know, be the justice for somebody that I never got. And I did that, you know, with my current job, you know, the military job, when I took that job, you know, being able to be a voice for somebody who has no voice sometimes will help you find that value and purpose. So long story or short story long, I think the answer to that question is, you have to let go of a specific idea of who you think you are and just be open to what's next. Be open to the opportunity that presents itself because you will find purpose in something else that may not be what you thought in the first place, whether it's, you know, a volunteer organization, a church, your next job, you know, even something small, your family, which is big. I mean, family is a big thing. I'm right. not saying that small, uh, but your dogs, you know, your pets, your hobbies. You can find like, dude, I just did it with this race car thing. I mean, who would have thought you could turn race cars into a or an organization to help veterans with PTSD, you know, adrenaline therapy to get people with extreme anxiety from the, the wounds, the psychological wounds of their service and turn that into racing and having fun. Dude, they did it. And it was a fun weekend. I mean, that's one of the things that helped me two years ago. So you just have to look and be open. And I think it's like we had an old squadron commander uh, from the two fits. Uh, you know, he always used to talk about improv. You know, you always say yes. And, you know, the yes. And this, you know, and then cause you, you, you agree to whatever, and then you add something to it. And that's just the improv. You improv your way until you find that new purpose and you find that next thing. So I don't know, man, Go, Doug, what do you got? This is, um, this is something we've been talking about in higher education for the better part of 20 years now, as soon as the first Gulf War started winding down and we started getting vets coming back to school. Um, it's, it's been called transition stress in, in the psychology research. And, um, the kind of the good news is everything I just said, we've been paying attention to it. We've been doing research on it. The bad news is nobody's really figured it all the way out yet. Um, we've got a lot of predictive factors. We can say it's more likely for combat vets. It's more likely for enlisted. It's more likely for people who are hurt or wounded. Um, they're getting better at targeting what help is available to those populations. And one thing that emerges really clearly is something both of you touched on getting involved with a specific organization or a purpose or a value outside of the military and religion is specifically mentioned in the research in the research. That's my five minute thesis. Dude, I, I like wish it. we had Wombat because um, Wombat's a, another great example of this because, you know, not just with his career, but his participation in Wake for Warriors, mm -hmm. his job, <clears throat> his airline job and kind of how he, you know, did that and his devotion to his family. Yeah. You know, that is a guy that has has done everything and, and he would be a prime candidate, but he continues to keep moving and to keep helping people and to keep being, a, a you know, <clears throat> A good person. I, I guess it goes down, down to rule number one: don't be a douche. Yeah, it does, you know, dude. Don't be a yeah. douche, dude. And, and dude, I think what's interesting is when you get to this point, when you create your own purpose, sometimes you let go of things that you thought. I mean, dude, you just did this. You know, you. I mean, oh, dude, <laughs> begrudgingly, 
But yeah. when, you, when you create your own value and your own purpose, yeah. you let go of the external things that 22 year old you would have, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. you, you stop chasing the past and start looking forward to the future. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, for that example, that for the email, you did it. You've been, you've been there and you, you've been there and done that. You've, you've, you have done everything you needed to do. Now it's time to start a new chapter, write that next chapter of your life. It's going to be completely different, but that's <clears> the point. You know, it's, it's good to have new chapters that are different and exciting and, and not what you've been doing because nobody wants to, I, to me, there's nothing sadder than the, the stagnation of somebody who does, you know, who doesn't branch out and try to experience other things than just the one thing that they've always wanted right. to do. And then when they lose it, it's gone and they've got nothing left. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't live the same year over and over. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah.